Hello guys, I hope everyone is fine. In today's video, we will be discussing the concept of a Turing machine. We are going to have the basic introduction of that topic. So, the video's entire theme would be the providing you the introduction to Turing machine. Now, uh, let me uh, just go with the Chomsky hierarchy that we have discussed. Uh, we have a language which is regular. There was one language which is regular, right? Then there was context-free grammar. Then there was the grammar of context-sensitive grammar. And last, not the least, uh, we had a grammar of unrestricted right so regular grammar we were recognizing it with finite automata context free grammar we created push down automata of the same context sensitive grammar we created linear bounded automata and this type of grammar which is known as unrestricted uh, this is acceptable by turing machine now what is turing machine to us so let's just go with the overview of uh, turing machine we had a uh, finite automata for the start part your finite automata was having a finite state machine which was having a finite state control let's say i want to recognize triple uh, a for example so we had a finite control machine or input string where we recognize first a then second a then third A, let's say if we have to recognize four A's. So our finite state control moved uh, obviously uh, from left to right, then second A is recognized, then third A, then fourth A is recognized. This is finite automata where we had an input string and your finite automata was entirely dependent upon one particular symbol. It means if I have to create the automata of a power n n greater than zero so we just need to create a and we got q1 and we have number of a's so we recognize this language because only one element was involved so that was finite automata to us then we uh, did do the concept of push down automata automata which is pda now in that particular part we had an input string and let's say the language that we wanted to recognize was a par n b par n n greater than zero so we know that we had a finite state control with if i take an example of double a and double b there was uh, this was an input string and we use the data structure which is stack and we recognized two A's, right? And then when two B's are there, one B will take one A out, another B will take one A out. So we use the concept of stack in that particular scenario. But this language was context-free. Gra uh, this grammar was context-free grammar. It wasn't uh, recognizing a string as a par n b par n and c par n and greater than zero in that particular scenario you cannot solve it using stack right so we had another particular uh, data structure which is a tape in turing machine if i talk about the turing machine concept so we have a data structure which is known as tape now this tape is actually uh, revolving in two directions so it works in two directions uh, i will uh, get about that particular uh, tape part later in in the video we have uh, we need to understand uh, the turing machine so the important point is this particular tape has in, uh, one very important part which is supposed to be recognized if i have a par n b par n and c par n and greater than zero so let's suppose i'm taking a string a a b b c c so it means i am matching two a's with two b's with 
two C's. It means if I have two A's, I must have two B's, I must have two C's. So the data structure that we are using would be tape, which uh, has the capacity of storing infinite symbols, right? So uh, some of the symbols are your input symbols. And some symbols are known as blank symbols. So if it is an infinite length tape, so we will fill it with input symbols. Let's say a par n, b par n, c par n, n greater than zero and can be any value. So we will fill this tape with input symbols, but we will also fill it with some blank symbols as well. This is the concept of blank symbol now how this tape would revolve so the point is uh, we have let's say this is our tape and we are recognizing a language with a a triple a triple b and triple c we have three a's then we have three b's and then we have three c's as well and we are putting some uh, blank symbols over here now the point is this tape has a tape head tape head actually you can refer it as a pointer it points in two directions it points in left as well as it points in right direction the target of the tape is to match a's b's and C's depending upon the language. So I would like to tell you that uh, the blank symbol is not a part of input symbol. The blank symbol is used. If I talk about blank symbol, it is used to fill infinite values in a tape so uh, the important point in in your turing machine is that turing machine can recognize recognize context sensitive grammar as well as unrestricted grammar right so this is the important of importance of turing machine where we have a clear case of a uh, tape which is infinite uh, length tape and importantly it uh, moves in two direction it moves in right as well as it can also it can move in right direction and it can also move in left direction that uh, you will see in upcoming videos but the important thing is it can recognize all the grammars which cannot be recognized by pdas so blank symbols uh, and the operations will be you know discussed in the next uh, video so this was a basic introduction of what is an advantage of turing machine over your a push down automata as well as your finite automata if you like this video kindly like share and subscribe thank you very very much